Welcome everyone to Talk of the Town. I'm Lauren Real, and we've got a great show for you today. We have our news partner coming up, Greg Guion with Medical Art Prosthetics. We'll also be talking with America's favorite zookeeper, Jack Hanna. And finally, we'll check in with a local favorite, Middleton Jewelers. But first, I want to introduce Caitlin Novotny and Melissa Sorensen from the Salvation Army. Good morning, ladies. How are you today? Good morning. Good morning. Doing well. It's so good to have you on. And I recently learned that the Salvation Army has a really special event coming up called the Red Cattle Reception. So can you give me a little background information on what exactly it is? Oh, sure. Our Red Cattle Reception is our annual fundraising event and kind of the kickoff to our Christmas Red Kettle campaign and the bell ringing campaign yeah. that everyone knows and loves. Absolutely. Um, so it's going to be a night of hors d'oeuvres, music, and a pretty incredible silent auction. That sounds fantastic. So. Sounds like a lot of fun, too. It will be. <laughs> so if you, if you want to get involved in, or if you want to attend, what, what are the next steps to take? Oh, there are definitely still tickets available. Um, you can look them up online, SalvationArmyDaneCounty.org. Or we even have slots available for a company sponsor, which the um, oh, information sure. is also available online. So you can get involved in a couple different ways, like as a company or as an individual, and get access to all that fun stuff that night has to offer. Oh, definitely. And to support such a great campaign, absolutely. So again, like last but not least, why is the Red Kettle Reception so important? This event is really important because it directly supports all the programs that the Salvation Army has going on throughout the year. Mm -hmm. At our community center where my office is, we have a food pantry, the community center itself, Job Connect, summer and youth after school programming, and so much more. In fact, um, Melissa over here, she works at the Social mm -hmm. Services Building on East Washington, so she kind of has a first-hand view of how um, events like the Red Kettle Reception directly benefit the people that we serve. The programs that you're working on. Yeah, that, and year-round, too. It sounds like what you guys do with the Red Kettle Reception is benefiting all these programs mm -hmm. you're doing year-round. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like Caitlin said, you work on the social services mm -hmm. side. So can you give us a little more in-depth look at the programs that you offer? Sure. Uh, we have quite a few programs um, that we run, but some of them, the, the ones that we're most known for are probably our shelters. Yeah. Um, we do operate three shelters, a 90-day family shelter, a drop-in family shelter, and then um, a women's shelter that and is the only... that's new, right? Or it's the, the only one? In it's the only one in Dane County, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I recently learned that, and I was like, wow, I, I didn't realize that, but that's so impressive that you've created that space like just for women mm -hmm. to go. If they're in distress, if they need help, it's just such a great resource for them to have mm -hmm. in the area. So I thought that was really awesome. Yeah. So other than that, you know, what kind of programs are going to directly benefit from the Red Kettle Reception? Are these, all the, are these programs all going to benefit or just mm -hmm. a selection? Um, like Caitlin said, all of our programs will benefit from this. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have a speaker from a particular program coming to the, um, to the, can or to the reception to talk about her, pro um, her, her participation in the program. Oh, and wow. she's from our Family Stabilization Program. So that is um, a program where families who were homeless then move into permanent housing and are supported by a case manager. Oh, so the, um, a case manager kind of sees them through their transition mm -hmm. from when they're initially in a shelter to when they finally are on their, you know, on their feet and in a home and you know yep. moving forward. Yep. And then once they're in the home, they help, the case manager helps them maintain and um, work the landlord and maintain that housing. So that's great to maintain that relationship mm -hmm. even throughout because I, de I definitely people like that, you know. The extra support, I'm sure it's very appreciated, and they mm -hmm. like having someone to kind of help them and be there through the process. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I'm sure, you know, in your time with Salvation Army, you've been feeling really rewarded by your work. So mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit about what some of the most rewarding pieces have been for you throughout your work with the Salvation Army? Sure. I just, I've been with the Salvation Army for quite a, quite a while now, and I think during my time, I've been in many different roles, and I've just seen how the organization has helped so many different people. Um, we've had a lot of women and families walk through that door um, at, at East Wash and just have been, see some of the families and them grow and yeah. be so successful. And the You've Salvation Army's had a huge part of that. Changed a lot of lives, mm -hmm. I'm sure. That must be such a great thing to feel like you're part of. So one last time, Caitlin, can we tell everybody at home how, once again, like where to go if they want to get involved, if they want to attend the Red Cattle Reception, or even maybe where they should reach out to if they're interested just in um, you know, having a Red Cattle and you know, doing some bell ringing this winter? Oh, definitely. So tickets are still available if you wanted to look them up, SalvationArmyDaneCounty.org, mm -hmm. or if you look up also on our website, RingBells.org. It's one of the tabs. You just click on that and you can sign up to actually ring bells at plenty of our locations. There's so many options available. Um, so you can get involved. Companies can get involved. There's so many ways to actually be involved and help out this community. 
Thank you for that. Definitely got to give a shout out to you guys and make sure everybody knows how they can help you out and participate in all this good work that the Salvation Army is doing. Well, once again, Caitlin Novotny and Melissa Sorensen from Salvation Army, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks. Thank you. It was great talking with you ladies. And we will be right back with more Talk of the Town. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. With me now is one of our news partners, Greg Guion from Medical Art Prosthetics. And today we're going to be talking about facial prosthetics specifically. So before we jump right into that, I kind of want to give everybody just a refresher on anaplastology and what, you know, what is it? Like how, how would you define it as a whole? Right. Well, anaplastology is really a, a collection of prosthetic services mm -hmm. that it sounds like a large complicated field, but really what it sure. is is it's a collection of of prosthetic services that aren't that aren't really included in the main, you know, traditional prosthetic disciplines like limb prosthetics, artificial right. arms, legs, dental prosthetics, uh, even ocularistry. Anaplastology really includes all the unusual kinds of services that aren't needed as often as the other Right, ones. that are a little more niche or, right. you know, not talked about as much. Because I think a lot of people are very, they're very used to seeing or accustomed to seeing like, a, you know, a leg or, you know, something like that. But they don't, you know, they don't always think about all these other type of prosthetics that may actually be needed if someone suffers a traumatic injury. Right. So now let's, you know, kind of dive in a little more to what exactly are facial prosthetics and then can you tell us a little bit about some of the items you've brought with you today? Right. So I thought I'd mention that uh, anaplastology, mm -hmm. facial prosthetics is kind of a, one of the main components of anaplastology. You've got within anaplastology, you've got breast prosthetics, mm -hmm. some ocular prosthetics, finger, hand, uh, oh, prosthetics, yeah, right? Uh, but facial prosthetics is what I specialize in because it's a really unique kind of a challenging area. Oh my so gosh, these are yeah. examples <laughs> of, of some typical facial prostheses where people have had a surgery, they may have had some tissue removed, sometimes possibly the whole part or whole, the whole nose. So this is an, is an example. Oh uh, wow. I don't know if you can see that or not, of a nasal prosthesis. Uh, and that, then there and are that, various and that, can you just tell me again how that's connected? So do folks connect that via a... Yeah, this is just for demonstration sure. purposes. We have a little magnet that's mm -hmm. holding the, the uh, nasal prosthesis uh -huh. onto the model. But typically these are either uh, held, held in place with either adhesives or with bone-anchored implants oh, wow. that, that do involve magnets. And this is an example, for instance, of an ear prosthesis that's held in place with bone anchored implants. Oh my gosh. So and I just have to say, just seeing these here, you know, live and in person, I'm just blown away, you know, by how incredible these are and what a difference I can imagine that they might make for somebody who has suffered a traumatic injury. Right, right. And finally, of the facial prostheses, there are orbital prostheses like this. And these wow. are some quick, quick examples that just demonstrate what these look like when people are actually wearing, wearing them. them. So in other words, this is actually a very similar prosthesis in size to this this right. uh, example here, mm -hmm. and here is the oh actual my, that prosthesis. That is just amazing, it really is. So you is. can see that, that that's they look... Right in. If I couldn't even, I could not tell which eye had the prosthesis in it, I really couldn't. Right, that's and amazing. this is actually a, a good example, or this is actually this model. I don't know if that can be seen or not. Wow. So when they're in place, they're really difficult to detect. Oh my gosh, yes. And so I mentioned facial prosthetics is really kind of a specialty. Mm -hmm. It's something that takes a lot of time and effort and focus to Yeah, it, it really is art. Stage. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. art. And other, other than that, other than using your, you know, your skill to do this, is there any new technology that you're utilizing currently? There is. I don't have an example with me, but I, uh, it's not really new technology in terms of coming up with a final prosthesis, mm -hmm. but it's... It's part of the process, so you've heard about scanning and 3D printing. Yeah, It's exactly. real big these days. Mm -hmm. uh, I work with the biomedical engineering department at the university, uh, and the folks there f actually scan, and uh, for instance, ear prosthetics or someone's ear, sure, and then reverse that information and then 3D print the the other ear. Oh, so, that, so it's an exact that, match. Yeah, exactly. That way, we get a perfect mirror image. Wow. So there's parts of the process like that. That, that you really can help. utilize that kind of technology right. for. It. That, right. that is very cool. I know 3D printer, like 3D printing as a whole has just been kind of a hot topic lately as far as what can we use it for, what can it do for us. So I do like that in this instance, if you, you know, you create a prosthesis, you can 
imitate it and utilize that, you know, the scanning feature and the 3D printing feature to make sure that it matches someone, you know, on both sides. It just saves, a, it does save saves a lot of time. A lot because of time. up to that point, I was literally having to hand sculpt everything. Yeah. So the And the I think scanning. that I really, that's, that's something that I always like to kind of touch on when, when we speak with you is that you really are doing this all by hand. So, you know, not only are you an anaplastologist, but I mean, you're really an artist with these items as well. And it comes across well and it, I'm sure, makes such a huge difference for folks. It's the only way it can really be re-approached as, exactly. as an art. So before, before we go, can you just tell us really quick whether insurance is able to cover facial prosthetics? They do. Insurances um, do cover facial prosthetics. It's always uncertain as to how much they're going to cover, right. um, you know, how health insurance is these days. Yes. It's, 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 A little touchy But we have sometimes. people that specialize in knowing the codes and mm -hmm. knowing how to build and send in claims for yeah. insurances. And get folks So they are paid. Help. Yeah. They're, they're recognized as a... Uh, a medical necessity these mm -hmm. days, so there's usually not that argument that they're, they're not necessary. Wonderful, that's yeah. that's very good to know. Well, it's been great talking with you, Greg. I'm sorry that it feels like it always goes so it goes short. Fast. It goes yeah. so fast, but uh, it was great to see these items. Thank you for bringing those in, and Thank it's you. always a pleasure to talk with you. So once You're again, this fast. is uh, Greg Guion from Medical Art Prosthetics, one of our news partners here on Talk of the Town. We'll be right back, so stay tuned. This celebrity interview is made possible by Pump It Up, where your imagination comes to play. Joining me now on Talk of the Town is America's favorite zookeeper, Jack Hanna, sharing how we can celebrate veterinarians caring for our pets right here at home, as well as those that care for endangered animals all over the globe. Jack has just visited Africa, where he met with the Gorilla Doctors, a group of veterinarians charged with assisting the critically endangered mountain gorilla population. He's joining us now from Columbus Zoo, because he started a program celebrating the tremendous work of these vets. Welcome back from your trip, Jack. It's great to have you on the program. Well, it's good to be back. You know, it's, um, it's great to come back here and have a uh, company like Cosequin, which are the ones that, I don't know if you know, and I, I'll say this, because they're the ones that were responsible for me going over there. Even though I've been to Rwanda many times, I have a home there, but really do, never done a story about the mountain girl of veterinarians. And of course, you know, every, all of us love our vet. And it, by the way, if people want to know more about what I'm going to say, just go to loveyourpettrustyourvet.com. Loveyourpettrustyourvet.com. Go there and you'll see what was done over there in this documentary. It's not that long. It's very emotional. It's very educational. It shows you how these veterinarians, a lot of them who came from the zoological world or veterinarians that were educated in our country, went to Rwanda because the mountain gorillas back in the 1980s, there were only less than 300 left in the world. Can you imagine that? Today we have over 800 left in the world. The gorillas that you see, I'm sure you've probably seen one in the zoo, are lowland gorillas from the Congo. There are over 200,000 200, of those animals. They live in the Congo where I filmed in Gabon uh, last year. 200,000 of those animals live in the jungles, the real hot jungles, 200,000. The mountain gorillas, as I said, 800 that live in Rwanda, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. In Rwanda, where I have a little house there, it's not, it's, I built it for the country, it's not even two miles from where the gorillas live, the mountain gorillas. Can you imagine an animal it's going to see them in the wild is absolutely amazing. And then uh, Kosuguin decided to go there and do a documentary on these uh, veterinarians who a lot of them came from zoos to study there and to teach the Rwandese people how to take care of them. Because when you have an animal of those numbers, you don't want the animal to die because they've been in a, the silverbacks have been in a fight and he has his, uh, his hand almost bitten off or they get caught in snares, which some people still set, not in Rwanda hardly anymore, but up in the DRC and other country, the, the Uganda, you might have a few snares because people rely on bush meat, which is the wild animals in there. They get a snare around their, their hand here, which they don't know it's there, and all of a sudden their hand rots off the veterinarians have to go treat that animal because there are very few left in the world. And it was amazing to watch this documentary and do it for them and see what, uh, what you think about it. Oh yeah, and every single individual definitely matters and has a big impact on the population. And it sounds like these veterinarians are working tirelessly to you know, care for every single one of them and also teach the people how to care for them as well. Right, you know, we all love our pets at home. I mean, that's what this whole thing's about, not just thanking them for the gorillas, but thank every vet in the country for giving us part of our family, giving us part of our family. So what, how do you feel we could best celebrate all veterinarians and all, all doctors that care for animals? Well, right now there's the slogans, love your pet, trust your vets, all over the place. You're getting ready, it's being delivered all over the country right now and something they just thought of, Kosuin did, and I think it says it all right there. You know, you, uh, animals can't talk. <laughs> we can, if we have a problem, we can tell people. 
Yeah, like, like exactly. Like our dogs, they couldn't even hardly walk in, when they were like eight, ten years old. And then we started coasting on them. And then I got to have my dogs two extra years where they could go around our farm and have fun, that type of thing. So you can imagine how important the coast going is, but not just that, the veterinarians can now give some pets something that they have relief from. And you'll have your animal longer, and so that, that speaks all for itself, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, that's just remarkable. Now, as far as a love your pet, trust your vet, where can folks go for more information? Just go to loveyourpettrustyourvet.com, loveyourpettrustyourvet.com, go there and you'll find out about the documentary as well as, you know, how you can thank your veterinarian for being a part of having something in your family, like a pet, that they help for us to take care of like you do your children. Yeah, and they are true members of the family, so that is wonderful that you're spreading the word about this program, sharing how we can celebrate our vets here at home, caring for our vets, and also the initiatives of the gorilla doctors over in Africa caring for an endangered population. So I'm really glad we got to talk with you today and shed some more light on both of these topics. Thank you. I'd love to come back sometime and talk about more animal life. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jack, and welcome back, and best of luck to you in all of your endeavors with this program. And one more time, everyone, that is the Love Your Pet, Trust Your Vet program. Make sure you guys check out their website for more information. Thanks again, Jack. It's been a treat talking with you today. Thank you. We'll see you in Wisconsin. Sounds great. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this special segment of Talk of the Town. We will be right back after the break. This celebrity interview is made possible by Pump It Up, where your imagination comes to play. Back to Talk the Town. With us now, I've got two gentlemen, the owners of Middleton Jewelers over in Middleton down University Ave. Welcome to the program. Thank you. It's, it's Thank great you, talking with you. And just to give you guys a quick introduction, we've got Manny Swine and Joshua Gamer from Middleton Jewelers. And I'm so excited to see everything that you brought with you guys today. Already I'm just sitting here ooing and eyeing over all these gorgeous items that you've brought with you guys. So I can't wait to talk a little more about what you guys have going on and what some of the current trends are. But first, I kind of want to talk about you guys are, you know, you guys are a boutique jeweler versus, yep. you know, a lot of the big box jewelry stores that we have around. So can you talk about what a customer can expect when they come in and they're shopping with one of you two versus, you know, one of those other types of experiences? Yeah, I think uh, customers now are very educated in um, what they're looking for. We have sure. Every month it seems like more and more people know exactly what they're looking for. And the nice thing about a boutique jeweler is mm -hmm. you're working directly with the owner. We have very close relationships with a lot of our vendors where we can hand select our stones. We don't have to take trips all over the world to do that. We just have trusted vendors. And Wonderful. I, I think a good, a good point is a lot of people don't like being sold. So we try to relationship yeah. build with our customer. Somebody can come in, sit down with the owner. This is what I'm looking for, whether it's custom or anything from a Rolex watch to a uh, pendant for mom for Mother's Day. So. Oh, I, I love that. I love that you know you trust the customer. You know that they, they are very educated in what they want and what they're looking for, and you want to help them achieve that goal and um, make sure that they get exactly the piece that they're looking for, as well as a great experience. And I think having that personal connection and that solid relationship with someone enhances the experience you know, even that much more. So that's, that's really nice to hear. And I also want to talk about what is your perspective on what makes Middleton Jewelers so unique? I would say it is the experience in itself, and we also utilize technology. We mm -hmm. have, you know, an iMac Festa mounted on the wall. We have multiple iPads, and we like to get people, you know, involved in the process, whether it's, you know, the couple or just, you know, one part of the, the couple or, you know, even we have multiple leads coming in from, you know, different parts of the country. So we utilize wow. technology on every level. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we've made a few pieces just you know, we had a customer recently in California where we made a meteorite diamond oh, and ruby ring. That sounds yeah. gorgeous. So a very, a very custom piece. Very custom connected piece. with somebody in California yep. through the use of that technology. Technology can definitely open a lot of doors Absolutely. if you're, you know, if you're willing to utilize it and see what it can do for you guys in yep. your business. That's that's really good to hear. But now is uh, the time I've been waiting for. Let's talk about some of the latest trends and some of the items that okay. you guys have brought with you today. I'm, I'm really excited to hear more about these pieces. Awesome. Well, the rose gold is making a big comeback. Yeah. Rose gold is very popular in Russia even today, but it's really coming back. And I can show you a couple pieces, Lauren. This is one of my favorites right here. A little bit more modern, contemporary. is kind of a design style that we're really, uh, we're really starting to see a lot more of. Um, oh we do a lot gosh. of vintage stuff as well, but the modern and is really coming back. Look at that. I think they need a close-up of that. That looked nice. Yes. Look at, that. Um, look at that. 
That is beautiful, and I love those stones in there. That's absolutely gorgeous, and I love the crisscross. And that, that rose gold is really beautiful. Yeah, and you set it off with chocolate diamonds. It's just got a great Yeah, great so that's look. what those are called, chocolate diamonds. They are, yeah. I like that. That's so that's so different, and what a unique piece. And I, and I also really like lately, I don't know if you guys have seen this much, but people seem to be mixing their golds a little more. They'll use a traditional yellow gold with a rose gold or something like that, and they'll create some really unique color combinations with what they're, you know, what they're accessorizing with, yeah. too. Or like what you're wearing today, you know, a silver and a gold watch or something yep. like that. Yep. So. The two-tone is in, for sure. And um, badger wear. You guys have got some uh, badger jewelry, too. Is that right? We do. So uh, we have some badger pearls. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have some packer pearls. So whether you're looking to accessorize for the game or you know, great gift for the holiday, or you want to be, you know, the shining star in your family, and, you know, <laughs> hook up your mother-in-law, you know. Oh, who, yeah, who it's, wouldn't love that? Yeah. That's, a, that's an so, awesome piece. You know, and all pieces, you know, under $250. So, I mean, it's very affordable. Yeah, a great and gift for great the holidays yep. coming up, too. Yep. And it comes with a nice jewelry box, if you take the look. Oh, but that is a nice jewelry box. You know. I like it. And, yeah, I mean, you're, you're in the right place for that. We've got a lot of fans here that are ready to adorn themselves with awesome. that kind of jewelry. We're, 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 we're ready, ready to meet kind of, them. We'd, we'd welcome you. Yeah, that's fabulous. So we don't have too much time left, but I really want to talk quickly about the custom design process as well as what other services you can provide. Awesome. So with regards to custom design, um, both of us, you know, are very involved in the process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we one, one of the biggest things we utilize is, you know, you have the Internet, you have Pinterest and, you know, creations that have already, you know, rings that have already been made and then what we can do is, you know, say somebody likes a, a shank on this ring and mm -hmm. likes how the stones are set on another ring, and we can put that all together. Into and, one piece yeah, with and, all the components they love. Right, and the whole thing is they don't need to worry about how that process works. Is we're, we're very in tune and listening mm -hmm. to what they have to say, and we put it together, and we've always had happy customers. So make it happen. Make yeah. it happen. Make it I fun. It. Make it fun. fun. It sounds That's like fun. the experience that folks have when they come visit you guys at Middleton Jewelers is just second to none. Yeah. You really are going to do everything you can to make their jewelry dreams, jewelry dreams happen. So I, yeah. I love to hear that. That's a, that's a great place. I mean, that just makes me want to shop there, and I'm sure it's you know, for folks at home, too. So yep. all right, gentlemen. Well, it's been great talking with you both and learning all about the experience that you can have when you walk into Middleton Jewelers. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks, Thank you. Lauren. It was great talking with you. Once again, we've got Manny Soin and Josh Gamer from Middleton Jewelers down University Ave in Middleton. Thank you, gentlemen, once again. And thank you to all the rest of our guests, as well as to you watching at home. See you next time on Talk of the Town.